Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another movie to play for you. Today's movie is Transformers Cell Light of Doom from 1985. So let's get started. Welcome to your Kid Stuff See and Read video book. As you listen to the Transformers story, you can read along with the words at the bottom of the screen. Get ready now for Satellite of Doom. Megatron, the evil Decepticon leader, stood on the observation deck inside the tremendous 200-square-mile cavern. It had been hollowed out beneath the fiery surface of Africa's Kalahari Desert. Next to him was his aid, Soundwave. The din of monstrous earth-moving machinery working forced them to yell. How much longer are we going to have to stay under this merciless desert master? Yelled Soundwave. As long as it takes to complete our task here. Megatron snarled. It's only asking, Master, because this blasted sand keeps getting in my cassette drives, and it's fouling everybody else's transmissions, too. Well, us Decepticons, at least. That is why we have lured these thousands of greedy, carbon-based humanoids here to perform the excavation and loading of the chamber for us there, using all promises of vast wealth, and then making them our slaves. <laughs> Ironically amusing. Certainly one of your better jokes, all-powerful Megatron. Moments later, the roaring turbine drives of another huge Decepticon coal transporter filled the air as it ended its long journey. As the tons of coal spilled out, slaves worked like ants, bulldozing it to those parts of the chamber not yet packed from floor to ceiling. What volume of coal is inside now? Megatron demanded. Four hundred billion. Cubic yards, master. It's the largest single concentration of coal on this planet. Only two more loads to go, and then we can proceed with the next phase of my plan. Are the electronite charges in place in prime? Well, master, almost. You see the sand and transmission problems? Almost. Everything will be completed on time, mighty Megatron. The entire cavern will be filled within a cocoon of lectinite explosives, just as you ordered. Your worthless mega life depends on that sound wave. Skyfire, the Autobot Air Guardian, screamed in low over the lifeless figure lying on the desert floor, and then shot straight up into the sky. Skyfire's coded signal filled the Autobot Command Center, where an impatient Optimus Prime, the fearless Autobot leader, and his right hand Prowl, listened intently. The Decepticons are out there somewhere, Prowl. I know it. We tracked their transport to the area until it disappeared from our screens. What vicious scheme can the evil Megatron be hatching now? Perhaps that Earthling lying out there holds the answer, Chief. He's totally unconscious and beyond answering questions. Not once the sensor drone reaches in and patches into his residual brainwave pattern. At that, the computer sprang to life, and the printer began spitting out the results. Optimus Prime was puzzled. Slaves? A 200-square-mile block of coal? What for? As the Decepticon command ship blasted off, its enormous rocket drives created a dust storm the size of a large city. The lights from the control console cast an eerie glow across the evil impassivity of Megatron's face. At least we no longer have to listen to the vile curses and screaming from those pathetic slaves. He announced a sound wave. No, Master. They certainly weren't happy about being left sealed up with all that coal. The slaves' carbon base will soon join the carbon base of the coal, thus creating the largest lens in the universe. <laughs> Normally it would have taken millions of Earth years and multi-tons of pressure to form the diamond I need. But with my genius and the force of the tons of lectinite, I shall create that crystal at the press of a button. And with that, Megatron released an explosion, the force of which the world had never seen, not even in its most powerful H-bomb. The explosion left in its wake the 
largest diamond ever formed. But that fancy gravity lifter and secure crystal were going south wave. Roger, master. The Decepticon satellite launching complex lay isolated deep in the steaming jungles of Brazil's Mato Grosso. Megatron supervised the final laser cuts for the refraction surfaces on the monstrous diamond satellite. T minus 10 minutes to launch somewhere. Uh, why are you looking so great? Humidity master, like the set drives. It's as bad as the sand from the desert. <laughs> Have no fear. Soon we Decepticon will have all the oil we need to bathe and protect our drive and transmission. <laughs> I cannot wait for each tiny puddle of oil on this miserable planet to fall into our hands. Therefore, with my crystal satellite, I shall have a lens powerful enough to focus the puny energy of that tiny sun and melt the entire mountain range they call the Rockies, turning it into an ocean of oil. And from that oil, my refineries will supply us with the fuel for the final defeat of the Autobots and the conquest of the universe. But as Megatron spoke, he failed to notice Bumblebee, the hovering Autobot spy, surveying their activity. First, the rumble of pre-ignition began on the giant Decepticon crystal satellite propulsion vehicle. Then, the main ignition kicked in with a blast that sent shockwaves reverberating along the ground and through the jungle foliage and air alike. But as the launch vehicle began to rise, a super jet appeared. Attack, brave Autobot Skyfire! Attack! Optimus Prime ordered over the command channel, breaking radio silence. Destroy Megatron and this newest tool of his evil imagination! The explosive fury of Skyfire's null rays and missiles was too late, however, as the launch vehicle shrugged them off and rose up through the atmosphere into space. Ah, Optimus Prime! You have met your match! Megatron gloated as he detonated an explosive charge, destroying the launch complex. Then he and the Decepticons punched in their afterburners and made a strategic withdrawal to await the fruits of their foul plan. Never before had the Earth been so vulnerable and unsuspecting. And it was all a result of the diabolic design of the villainous leader of the Decepticons, Megatron. Having launched an enormous diamond lens satellite into space over the North American continent, he was now preparing to fix its position so he could bring the full extent of the sun's energy to bear and melt the rocky mountains into an ocean of oil. That oil would be used to fuel his corrupt pursuit of universal domination. Therefore, buried deep inside a remote location in Northeast America, Megatron and Soundwave concentrated at the controls in the Decepticon ground station as they made the final adjustments to the satellite. Second burn on the starboard attitude thruster. Megatron ordered. Roger, Master. Shut down all engines. Roger. All engines shut down at this time. No, the satellite lens is in a fixed orbit over its target. When the first rays of the sun strike it, the fun will begin. In the Autobot Command Center, Optimus Prime and Prowl were also monitoring these last movements of the Decepticon satellite as it assumed its stationary position far out in space. That's it, Chief. Looks like they're on station. Shut down all rocket engines. Here it is. Here comes the sun. But wait! Look, Chief! The refraction facets of the lens are beginning to focus a beam of sunlight! Optimus Prime interrupted with shock and disbelieving horror, understanding suddenly and full well the terrible weight of the consequences of Megatron's fiendish plan. The energy of hundreds of billions of hydrogen bombs concentrated on a confined area like that is going to precipitate disastrous and deadly results. That's a lot of heat, all right, Chief. Millions will perish in the ensuing calamity of Megatron's debased thinking. As the first scorching rays of the satellite's beam began to sear the mountains, the surface temperature of the ground jumped upward ten times a thousand-fold. And 
entire forests immediately burst into violent flames, and tons of smoke and soot began to rain down on the continent. Then the rocks began to liquefy, slowly at first, secreting the moisture held tightly for eons within the granite and shale. Finally, sweating out the first signs of the precious black fluid so dear to Megatron's callous heart. Then the heat factor began to soar at a rate beyond imagination, and the last bastion of geologic formation wilted before it, changing from a solid state to a liquid. Streams of gaseous molten lava and oil flowed into rivers and then formed into lakes. They expanded the sea of depth, threatening to engulf Los Angeles and the entire West Coast. At an ever increasing speed, it also began moving eastward, menacing small desert towns as its volume doubled and redoubled. Not possessing the perfect weapon needed to destroy the satellite, and not having the luxury of time to come up with a variety of solutions, Optimus Prime quickly improvised. The lens was beyond Skyfire's range, because the fuel necessary to reach it was more than he could carry. But with Ratchet's mechanical wizardry, he was prepared to try something. Isn't Skyfire ready, Prowl? What's holding things up? Ratchet's good, Chief, but he's only mechanical. Skyfire will be online as soon as Ratchet has the auxiliary booster tanks attached to the fuel dump. Oh, that's it, Chief. Ratchet just gave you the go-ahead. One stand immediately. The Autobot Air Guardian roared into space, knowing he would not have enough fuel to return safely from his mission. And at his fuel limit, he released a barrage of null rays and missiles that concentrated in a mighty display of explosive power. Decepticon ground station, Megatron slapped Soundwave across the back so hard in a fit of glee that he almost popped Soundwave's cassette right out of his chest. Did you see that? Not a scratch, not even close. They cannot touch us. Ah, Optimus Prime, prepare to meet your mechanic. Absolutely all-powerful Megatron. And did you see how the Autobot superjet burned on re-entry into the atmosphere? That was nice, too. Time and options were limited. Optimus Prime still had a card up his sleeve. He had instructed Ratchet to weld together a square mile sheet of polished metal. And now, using electromagnetic lift, a squadron of Autobots was flying the metal sheet into position between the satellite lens and its focal point on the Earth's surface. Why is he Megatron? Soundwave said in a confused manner as he pointed at the video monitor. The Autobots are up to something funny with that giant metal mirror! Megatron screamed as the mirror intercepted the satellite's beam and bounced it spaceward again. The moment the reversed beam struck the satellite, it instantly exploded into millions of crystal shards with a force so tremendous that tides on Earth were raised ten feet. And using the fix from Megatron's last desperate instructions to his creation, Optimus Prime launched an all-out attack of Autobots on the Decepticon ground station. Using special thermal excavator missiles, they peeled open Megatron's underground lair like a tin can. Optimus Prime, you metallic nemesis! Megatron roared in his exposed fury. One day! So that was Transformers Satellite of Doom from 1985. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And we have another video coming out real soon.